session, it's always uh, nice to be here. Uh, I actually, so these are the papers that, I've, that on which uh, when I'm going to, the story I want to tell about uh, is based, but interestingly, so this first paper uh, was presented in, in this similar uh, meeting by my student, uh, Alberto, as you can see, like five years ago or something like that. So it, it, it's nice to have a forum where you can uh, get together and, and discuss uh, interesting uh, physics. So let me let me tell you the basically the situation. So the, let me let me describe the top might become a little technical towards the middle, but I want to have the, the, the picture very clear. So the picture is this. So we, we have ADS-CFT, which is a great tool, and it's an equivalence of partition function between field theory and string theory, okay? But really we, oops, <laughs> let me, uh, but really we never or, or rarely compute um, compute using a string theory. So most of the time, most of the time what we do is, is essentially we approximate the string partition function by some semi-classical expression in, in, in gravity, right? Um, but now we have a lot of new results that come from localization in supersymmetric field theory, n equal four, ABGM. Uh, so now we have an exact answer for this. And of course, uh, the whole idea is to see if we can use this information that we have of exact results to try to understand better how to do this step, how to go, how to, to understand the semi-classical approximation that we use. That's sort of the goal of this story, okay? So now we have localization, so we know the left-hand side exactly as a function of all parameters, n, lambda, etc., And we want to see how the string perturbation theory needs to be modified um, to get to, to what we want to Okay, and then um, as I said, this is a, in a sense, this is my idea of precision experiment. So this is my experiment. I have, I have the, ex the experimental answer, and I have my theory, and my theory has to to, to work in a way that it, it reproduces the, the answer, which is uh, exact. Okay, that sort of uh, the whole talk will be about how to implement this using Wilson loops. Okay, that's that's the that's the that's the plan. So and here is the, what I'm going to talk about uh, in more detail. So there's the Wilson loop in the fundamental representation. This is, and I, and I want to emphasize that this is, once you decided to follow this program, this is the simplest object that you, that you encounter. This, the, the fundamental, the Wilson loop in the fundamental representation. So the first thing that we need to do is to explore that beyond the leading term. I also want to talk about higher dimensional representations and the corresponding holographic uh, dual objects. And then uh, I will describe, of course, um, this Wilson loops in uh, holographically. Then I will tell you about one test that I that I that I perform and uh, what I learned from that from the test. And I will talk a little bit about many other tests that one can do in other situations where the localization answer is known. And I will conclude. So Wilson loops are again very important operators uh, in any in any gauge theory. In, in particular, um, they are all the parameters for confinement. We, we know and love these objects. Uh, this is the standard definition. So what I'm interested, and this is again what I want to, to emphasize, what I'm interested is in understanding how to evaluate this object beyond the leading term. So in, in, in QCD or in, in more uh, realistic theory, this is like computing the Lusher, co the Lusher correction to the, to the quorum by quorum potential. Okay, so this is, this is what we are, are going to do. In n equal four, which is the theory that, that, that at the center of ads uh, this Wilson loop gets enhanced by this, <coughs> by this piece. These are the, the scalars in the n equal four um, that the multiplet. So again, the, the object is given by, uh, so this is, this is the field content. I need a curve in superspace, a representation. Uh, we are considering only bosonic uh, Wilson loops. And uh, then if you impose that this object is supersymmetric, uh, it, it gives you that the, the, the curve that you, can, that you have to consider, if it is unlike, it will be a straight line. But you're allowed to do conformal transformation, so you can turn that straight line into a circle. And this is the object that we are going to discuss. So around the year 2000, Drucker and Gross, and also um, 
Erickson Serena von Sarembo suggested that, that there is an answer, an exact answer for this object uh, given by a Gaussian matrix model. Okay? And their, their idea came from, from trying to sum diagrams. They, they were able to, to partially sum uh, ladder diagrams, and they reproduce essentially the leading, the leading term in the expression. Uh, and for, for, for a few years, this was sort of like a, a conjecture, this matrix model conjecture. But in 2007, Yes. So, so, why does it have to be timeline? And what happens if you went to Euclidean? No, no, no. You can go to Euclidean. In fact, the circle is Euclidean. Right. But, but the analysis of supersymmetry that, that is a standard that gives you the straight line is timeline supersymmetry. It's a, in Lorentzian signature, if I try to do a straight uh, a space like straight line, it's not. It's not too hot supersymmetry. It's not hot So, so Preston proved the, the, matrix, the Gaussian matrix model conjecture and his proof in both localizations. So essentially, very briefly, uh, so if you want to compute here, you can put some, insert some operator if you want to compute some expectation value, but, or, or you can put it here to, suppose you want to compute some expectation value and you have some off-shell supersymmetry by which you can deform your action, okay? Then if Q square, if Q squares to, this is Q, Q uh, to close. So if you look at the derivative of this expression with respect to D, uh, you can see that it's independent of T. So the, then the idea, which is the key of localization, is to evaluate it when T goes to infinity, or in Planck's day we would say when H bar goes to zero. Mm -hmm. Now my H bar is one over T. So now uh, we are in good standing with Planck. <laughs> um, so then the, the main correction comes from the classical piece, okay, which is the locus of this QB equals zero. And then you have to essentially account by for one loop correction. And that gives you the answer. So in, in the case of n equal four, there is this piece that comes from the conformal copying of a scalar. This is now, this is a constant matrix. Um, and this essentially proves that the, that, that the idea of, of that the expectation value of supersymmetric rules and loops can be computed using a Gaussian matrix model. Okay. Again, for, for, this is also very nice because for, for a while, um, the ideas to prove this were, were mostly uh, diagrammatic and uh, very complicated, and in fact, the answer uh, is, is, very, is, very, is very clean and involved no, no diagrams or anything. But the amazing thing, of course, is that the path integral over field that was very complicated reduces to integration of matrices. Okay? With that, uh, and a little bit of, um, so there's, Matrix theory, you can compute uh, the expectation value of, of the Wilson loop exactly. So this is for the, the fundamental representation. Here's the exact, uh, on the circle, this is the exact answer, okay? So this is some like air polynomial. And uh, so you can see it's exact in N and in lambda. Um, of course, because I want to move towards, towards holography, I'm interested in taking first the large and limit, and then the large lambda limit. So this is the exact answer that I get from, from the exact localization answer. Okay. Now, from the holographic point of view, uh, I will not tell you a lot about the detail of the, of the calculation. I will just, because I will tell you about some other details, okay? But, uh, but essentially, you now need to look in the, in the holographic side. Uh, there's a, the, com the configuration due to Wilson loop was, well, I don't have a lot of references, but, um, so Maldacena and, and, and Suyun Ray and Yi on, understood that the, that the Wilson loop uh, is captured by a classical world sheet. Okay. And uh, so the world sheet that describes the half supersymmetric Wilson loop is a, is a world sheet that is ABS2. And what I have written here is, okay, there's the classical piece that gives you square root of lambda, which is the leading term here. This is the classical piece. Okay. And then if you want to compute this piece, what you need to do is to consider a quantum fluctuations of that of that surface. That's our our prescription, right? So we have uh, we're going to do some classical analysis in, in this case. So we have a surface, and then we look at the fluctuations. The fluctuations are uh, then they give me the, the one loop uh, correction to the effective function. So what we have essentially are um, three massive modes. Let's look just at the at the bosons, and you will see it's very intuitive. So I have ADS two inside ADS five. I, and that embedding basically cost me three massive uh, massive modes, 
And then there are the five massless modes of, of, of fluctuations on the sphere of AGS5. And then, of course, there, there are the fermions. So, but you can compute uh, this ratio, and what you get is, is this, this expression. Okay? And I want to emphasize that this is not, a, this is not an error. So many people uh, over many, many years have done this. Uh, Duke Grosselin did it in, in 2000, and they, they get this result. Then uh, um, Martin with, with Allen did it in 2008 using completely different methods. Uh, and more recently, Arkady revisited this with yet another, another set of methods, and this is the answer. Okay? So what you see immediately is that, uh, so here's red is always field theory, blue is, is holography. So holography doesn't, doesn't understand this term. It's, it's not here at all. And, and, and even the finite piece is, uh, is, is not correct. And I want to emphasize, this is the simplest, the simplest object that you would like to compare with localization. Okay, there's, uh, and it already fails. But this was known for a long time, of course. Drucker, Gross, and Salin attempted this without knowing that the answer was exact. They said, okay, let's assume that the field theory answer is this mathematics model. Then holography is not reproducing what I expect. Now, of course, I can, there are many arguments uh, there were many arguments about this, this discrepancy. So there, the, the, the lambda, the log of lambda missing term, uh, people argue that they are attributed to maybe for a thin perturbation theory in these curved spaces. Uh, I need to, to fix the ghosts, and there might be some zero modes that give me this, this log of lambda. Um, then the discrepancy, you can say, well, once I, I cannot fix log of lambda precisely, then I can only change by some, some then it can affect my, my, my finite piece. So, it, is, it, is, it would have been very nice if it matches, but it, it didn't match, and you said, okay, but there are reasons why this might not match, etc. Uh, yes? Small question. So lambda involves the string coupling, right? G. Yes. So uh, if you, instead of making the single part of the gauge field A, if you use a dual field, you get a different answer, right? Because lambda would be different from a dual field. You mean if, if I like a half loop, or? No, if you just, so the boundary theory has SGR, right? So you could use A, B, uh -huh. or A, right? Yes. I'm just trying to understand. So in the bulk, when you take the area of a surface, which you yes. get in the bulk, do you divide by G Newton, or what do you divide by? No, I, I mean, I have a classical string, one with two pi, alpha prime. So you take, so you take the, 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 the string action. Yes, yes. Okay. That's, it. That's it. If I were to compute the, the dual object would be, a D, I use a D1 a string, yeah. and that should correspond to the half loop. If, if you Okay. So if you use the AU, you use the, right. the string tension, and if you yes. use that, so you find the action of the string using the tension. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So this this was the, the this was the situation for for a while uh, before things get better. Let me tell you about uh, other discrepancies around. Okay. Um, so so what I want to explain now is essentially that. What I described was sort of this line, the fundamental representation, but there are other objects that describe the symmetric representation for the wilson lubin lante symmetric representation. Uh, there's an interesting story, of course, so my, my uh, references are not well organized, but again, uh, so Madhacena, uh, Ray, and Yi understood what is the, the dual object to the wilson lubin the fundamental representation. Uh, Drucker and Fiol, and, and and other people understood that if you want to consider um, higher representations, k-symmetric or k-anti-symmetric, more or less what you have to deal with is, 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 a, is a, a version of the Myers effect. So you have to put some, some flux in, in. And then the object that describes the, the Wilson loop is, is either this D3 brain for the symmetric or a D5 brain for the anti-symmetric. Okay. So now I'm going to, I'm going to walk you Brief, very quickly uh, through the through how to compute uh, how to compute the expectation value of those Wilson loops in in the field, on the field theory side. Okay. Again, I will not unfortunately here I'm, I'm, we are not able to do it exactly as for the fundamental, but there's there you can use other other technology in uh, in matrix uh, integral and compute the leading term and the subleading term, and then I will do the same thing in uh, on the holographic side. Okay. So here is uh, essentially this. This is the, the answer of localization. This is my Gaussian matrix model. Uh, what we do when we have uh, well, this is an n-by n matrix, but we want to work in the large n limit. Uh, when when then then of course I switch this to an integration over over 
eigenvalues, I will have to pay my van der Mond determinant by doing that for doing that transformation. And now instead of looking at uh, at the expectation value directly in the k-symmetric or anti-symmetric, it is convenient to use some generating functions. So this this is a little technical, uh, but I think it's useful because it, these kind of calculations appear in many in many areas of physics. Uh, so for the anti-symmetric, I need to, to expand this and take the coefficient of p to the k, and similarly for the for the symmetric. And essentially, in, in the context of this uh, matrix model integral, this is the integral that will give me the from which I can extract the generating function. So I need to take uh, a particular coefficient, and that I I I, I implement by computing a, a contour integral. Okay. Um, then here's the the Wigner distribution for the for the for the matrix model that we're discussing, which is the Dawson. So the potential, given the potential, you know the distribution of eigenvalues. Here's the expression. I will very quickly uh, show you how you compute it uh, for the symmetric. For the symmetric representation, uh, there is a branch cut and there's a contour. So this is uh, all details uh, of this computation uh, are, are given in a in one of the papers that I listed at the beginning. Um, it's pretty standard. What I want to say is that this is not a, a situation where there is a very subtle computation that you might, that you, that you might make a mistake. No, this is just a contour integral in, uh, in, in a very established theory of matrix, matrix integral. Okay? And here's the answer uh, that you get. So the, this is the living term. Kappa is, is related to the so cup is related to k, and remember this is symmetric representation. So I have k boxes in my in my diagram, and uh, this is the leading term, and this is the subleading term. And similarly, I can compute it for the anti-symmetric representation. I will not b bother you again with contour integral, but it's just that technology, nothing nothing fancy. And here's the answer. So now, um, in the next ten minutes or so, I will tell you how you compute, or how do you compute those objects or, or those corrections using holography. What are the, I'm, I'm getting a little lost. What are the thetas here? Okay, so, um, okay, so, so theta is, 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 there's an equation given, so theta is, 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 a, is a function of, of, of k. No lambda dependence. No, no lambda dependence. And what's k? K is the number of boxes. So if I have a K symmetric representation or K anti-symmetric, uh, so that's that's the. This, in, in a sense, these co these configurations are interesting because they have one extra knob. So in the fundamental, you had lambda and n. When you do into infinity, you have only lambda, and that was it. So so one natural thing for me was to okay, maybe in this more complicated representation, there's an, a, a different dependence, and I can I can try to see what's a whether the corrections agree, uh, at least as a function uh, of this parameter. And are there, are there problems when, let's say in the symmetric, when k gets of order n? Very you nice. Have to, you have to demand k small? Of right, so so in, in all these computations, uh, you want k to be order n, but no bigger. Well, in the, in the symmetric it cannot be, but in the symmetric it has to be order n. Or, or less. Uh -huh. If it becomes too, lar too large, then well, okay. Then you can still compute it using uh, all the techniques. But in the holographically, then now you have to look at some back reactive mm -hmm. geometry with these between brains. No longer some prop object in, in ADS five versus five. To be in the regime where the holography uh, is, is well behaved, you need k order n. K over n has to be fixed. Any other question? So let me let's let's go to the holo holographic part. Um, so again, for the case symmetric representation, what I need is, is a D3 brain with k units of a fundamental string, charged dissolved in in its four volume. That's what I was alluding to when I said uh, Myers Myers effect. So again, Drucker and Fiol understood this, this geometry and this this classical uh, solution. Here is my D3 brain action, uh, the D3 brain tension. I know how it depends on n, etc. Okay, so again, in the first object, I had a string. I did not write the, the action of the string, but this is my starting point. Uh, so what I'm going to show you. And where does the S2 go? I mean, the 
ADS2 part of the brain and the uh, and the nerve. Mm -hmm. Good. So I think I have your answer uh, more or less here. Okay. So so this is this is a D3 brain. So it, its work volume would be ADS2 cross S2, but this is all inside the ADS5 part. It's still a point on a spot. Okay. And this is important. This is this also fits nicely with the idea of giant giant uh, gravitons and. So, because the radius of this of this sphere, this is two, is not is in principle not bounded, uh, which is for the D5 you will see that it's, it's an S4 inside S, a, a S5, and that that really is is what tells you that that one is in the anti-symmetric representation. It's bounded by that. Okay. So here's the here's okay. This was a S5 plus S5. Um, this is. The embedding. Let me show you the well. This is this is not the embedding. This is sort of getting ready for the embedding. Here's the classical solution. So it, it sits at some point u in my foliation of ADS5. This uk is given uh, precisely by this k uh, with this formula, and then it has flux uh, along the, the zero one, the electric flux. Okay. Now there's a unique way to embed the S2 in the ADS5, or there's a whole family of possible. Um, no, this is this is the this is the only this is the only solution with with this property. So then it's not like there are multiple ways to choose the S2 inside the ADS by No, no. I mean no. Okay. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the symmetries because again, symmetries are our friends and we can we can use them to make sure that we did not make a mistake. Everything is, is correct. So, so this this has a SL2R in the ADS2, realizes as in the work volume isometry, SL3 because there was an S2. And then it's a still a point on S5. So these are the bosonic symmetry. These bosonic symmetries um, form are the bosonic part of, of this uh, supergroup. So when I compute my fluctuations, I want to go back and make sure that the spectrum of fluctuations will be completely described by super multiples of this group. And that would be a good check. Okay. Obviously for this for the fundamental string this was very easy. And I, I didn't pause to, to discuss it, but here it would be a little bit more more involved. Okay. So remember the field theory symmetries. So I told you in this slide, I told you how the symmetries are realized on the holographic side. Uh, let me remind you how they are re realized on the field theory side. So again, uh, these are the bosonic subgroups of SU2, 2, 2, slash 4, uh, for M4. The, 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 the bosonic symmetries are essentially come from breaking the, the conformal group. These are the, the ones that, that remain for the configuration for the for, for a string in um, this is a string in, in sorry, this is a Wilson loop. Uh, so this this uh, these are the same the operators that, that remain unbroken and they form SL2R and SU2 and then the a point on, on well not a point but this the symmetry among this the, the R symmetry gets broken to by expectation value of this scalar to this uh, to this subgroup and these are again they confirm from the field theory side that I'm looking at the right supergroup. Okay. And what fixes the radius of the S2 that you go to? The flux. Here. Uh, the radius of this two is given by this sine square, which is fixed by the flux. <coughs> okay, so if I look at this D3 brain, D3 brain action, and I evaluate on the classical solution that we just discussed, you will reduce the leading sign. Okay, now my interest here, as I expressed at the beginning, is to go and look at the fluctuations of this and, and see what happens at the next, at the next, next order. So again, this is the bosonic action. There's also, thanks to this, this gentleman, we also can, can write the fermionic part for the for the, the, the brain, the brain in particular. Um, and I again, I can just take my classical solution, look at uh, the fluctuation, and this is the action for the fluctuation. So I have a uh, six massless scalar, okay, and um, there's a massless uh, gauge field on ADS2 process two. This is the bosonic sector, and then of course I have the fermion. Um, at the time that I did this computation, uh, well, let me I, I'll make comments at the end. But these are this is the spectrum of fluctuations. Uh, you can see again. I, I, I don't want to. 
I don't want to, to, to give too many details, but it, it is nice that you can that you can make sure that they they have the right quantum numbers to be in the multiplets of, of, of SO2 for star slash four, four sp, sorry. Here the multiplets written uh, very explicitly. The the classical the, the the string in the fundamental representation is this multiplet, the ultra short short. You saw it, it was uh, there were five massless scalar, then um, a, a, Three massive and then the Fermi. So everything is 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 correct. This is a good check because when when people start computing these fluctuations, there were always a, a number of discrepancies. So this, the fact that the fluctuations that we get fit in these super multiplets seals the deal. So these are the fluctuations. Uh, these are the these are the correct fluctuations of this Okay. So uh, again, this is my goal is to to understand this subject. I will not. Uh, Again, I, once I have the, the content, I can use, in particular, I use um, heat kernel methods to compute the, the, this one loop correction, and here it is. So I use, I wanted to emphasize that, um, so one, one thing that Arkali did recently with uh, with Binder was to, which again, it's, it's interesting. So I didn't realize, but if you look at this, this is essentially a, an n equal four vector, a billion vector multiple on ABS2 process two, period. Once you, you view it like this, then is this this answer of one loop correction is also is also immediate. Again, using the kernel technique. So it's a it's a, it's a big uh, it's a big simplification of the computation, but the answer of course remains the same. This is the answer. So now we are in the business of comparing. So okay, for the let me before I compare, let me tell you that I also did this computation for the D5 brain, uh, with Wolfgang and, and again Alberto. Uh, this theta k that appeared before is, is given by this equation. In that case, it appears by the saddle point or some saddle point condition in the, in, the, in, the, in the integral. And here is, of course, just a classical solution where they, this is a D5 frame that wraps ADS2 inside ADS5 and S4 inside S5. So it's, it's the, the, the typical idea of these giant objects that can be either wrapped in something inside ADS5 or in, or in S5. But if they do in S5, then they have a maximum size. So that tells me that k cannot be greater than n, and that, that means that I'm I'm really looking at, at the anti-symmetric uh, representation. But the same roots of loop, this surface can also be well When you how do you go from the D3 to the D5 No, I, these are different objects. Yes. So one describes the Wilson loop in the symmetric representation, k symmetric representation, and this is the k anti-symmetric representation. Okay, so again I can um, I have done this computation. Um, here's the action of fluctuations. It's a little bit uh, more complicated, and there's some some couplings. But again, uh, to make sure that I did not make a mistake, I look at this. I, I reduce everything to ADS2. I know the supergroup on which this thing has to fit, and it does. So this is this is uh, correct. And here's the answer for the D5. Okay. So now, since this is the first talk, yes. So uh, was the Relationship to the data k is here we're in an approximation of the larger limit, or is that exact? Sorry, say that again? The relationship between theta k and k over n, the formula for theta k, was that uh, a large n um, answer, or is that? This is, this is large n, k or n fixed. Okay, so how do we know that uh, the error in that doesn't change the, um, the blue term? Good. So, so we don't know. Yeah. So this is this is this is the, the we don't know for sure. Um, I can I can argue that in, in, in certain regime this is the object in holography that is that is the the one that contributes the most uh, the most. But we don't we don't really know for, for for a fact. So, but what we can do is to explore and, and, and try to see. Well, first we need to understand. Um, how we can do better? How can I? How how we, which I will, I, will, I will discuss. So that 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 equation that you have before for theta k, you said came from a saddle point in the matrix model integration. Oh, uh, in the so no, let, oh, okay, okay, maybe I'm I'm, mix, I'm missing things. So this equation, I'm looking for the classical solution of a defined frame, right. and it tells me. Okay, let me see if I have a. I don't have okay. I don't have the S5 metric, but suppose. Oops, sorry. Sorry. 
So this equation. So I just I just have a, a D5 brain, and I want to wrap it on S4 inside S5. So so think this angle is precisely I write S5 as d theta squared plus sine squared theta d S4 squared. Then because I have flux in the in the one two direction, my equation of motion tells me precisely where in the S5 this 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 um, this brain wants to be, and that that's the equation that I get from that from from there. So the same way that for the D3 I had UK, the radius of the S2, depending precisely on the flux. Here, if you wish, the radius of the S4 depends uh, on K. So, um, I mean, there, there are two questions. Whether there are sort of one over n corrections to this, which would be presumably very difficult to understand, mm -hmm. right? But uh, are there are there alpha prime corrections to this as well? I mean, that, that, that's your, your corrections in yeah. order lambda, right? Right, so very, very good question. So I will answer precisely. The, if, I, if, I, if I just want to follow a uh, Planck uh, story, I look at the action of the D5, and I look at the coefficient, and that's going to define which expansion I, I'm actually using, okay? So for the D3, I, 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 I haven't, so for the D3, it's actually it turns out it's not one over n or or alpha prime is one over n. So the coefficient of the D3 is n. The coefficient of, of the D5 is n square root of lambda. So as complete as 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 funny as it sounds, that's my that's my h bar one my one over my h bar. That's I, and I cannot and this is also to your question. I I don't know I don't know how in in field theory I can play with with all the parameters as I see fit. In, in, in holography, I am handed certain combinations, and that, that's what we can do. Now we can say this might be the reason why you are not you are not uh, you are not getting agreement because the expansions are, are slightly different. But I, I think um, that I mean it, it is hard to understand that before you you do your computation. Okay, so this is the the D5. Um, here's the answer. So here's the comparison. Again, uh, what is happening here is that, as you see, so there's a, there's a factor, there's a, a sign uh, mistake, but at least the, fo the, the form is, is correct. But, uh, but again, uh, this is the situation. And similarly for the D5, here there's a factor of three uh, that doesn't seem to, to fit. But again, we can, and here again, this is, uh, this is what I wanted to consider. This is my, my h bar if you want. This is an expansion in, in n square root of lambda. And for the d3, for the d3 is an expansion in n. OK, so the d brains, so our idea that, that we have uh, alpha prime expansion and n expansion for d brains uh, is slightly different. The tension tells you uh, what, the, what the expansion is. Was there a lambda in the, in the definition of? Kappa? Yes, relation. yes. There's there's a k over n square root of lambda. Square root. Okay, so these are these are let's let's go back to to what I the story that the part the positive part of the story if, if there's anything like that. But I, I want to emphasize that um, that these kind of discrepancies are telling us that that we need to, to understand what we do in holography a little bit. So so let's see how we can improve how what kind of experiment we can do. Uh, that would be a lot better than, than, than just checking. And again, I, I, uh, I want to publicly give a lot of credit to Martin because in, in one of his papers, the one for the, for, the, for the fundamental string that did not match, he suggested that perhaps the, the key idea would be to find two configurations holographically that will have everything more or less the same. Same worship topology, then you, you cannot blame go zero modes or some fancy artifact of the string perturbation theory surface spaces. And this is essentially what I want to do. So let me let me re rephrase again. So we, we know this object from from localization. We really think that this should be some kind of vertex operator, some some object in a string theory. We don't know how to compute it, but what we do is to say, okay, let's do it semi-classically. I have the classical piece. The classical piece is always matching. Then I can compute one loop, and maybe there's something that comes from go zero modes that that I don't I don't understand. But if we find two configurations that have the same worship topology, then we will 
more or less be guaranteed that this this is going to to cancel. Okay, and that's what I'm going to do. So the the hero now would be a quarter BPS. No, I wrote BPL, but this is a quarter, quarter BPS. Um, what's on loop? Let me tell you what that guy is. On f in the free theory side, is again it's it's a circle in this in this x mu. But now in the these are now in the in the space the scalar in the scalars. It, it essentially is like a, like a cup, okay? And I, I, will, I will I have the picture. But then again, similar arguments. Again, localization for this has is not completely is not done a hundred percent. But but it is it is argued either for diagrams or a computation by by Festum that that this is the answer. That essentially is the same as the half BPS, except that you need to rescale the lambda by this this cos cosine square of, of theta zero theta zero is this parameter uh, in the space of, of the scale of two. okay that is the object so we have again the exact answer what i need to do is to divide the quarter bps by the half bps and that would be my field theory sort of uh, this is again my my experimental value and i'm going to do my holographic calculation of, of this ratio to to compare with that Okay, so again, this is ADS5 uh, process 5. Uh, this is the parameterization that I'm going to use. Here's the classical solution. So maybe it was a little quick. I have a picture that, that should clarify this. But essentially, this is what is happening on the ADS, ADS5 part. Um, this is what is happening on the S5 uh, part. Um, this is the wall sheet uh, metric. You can evaluate that. Um, so here's the picture of the of the solution. The solution, this think of this as ADS2, so it, it wraps ADS2. This is sigma equals zero is the boundary, sigma goes to infinity this point. If I take sigma, okay, there's a parameter which is a, which is uh, there's a parameter in the solution which is uh, theta zero, but I can relate that to to a, another parameter sigma zero. So I will refer to sigma zero often. But essentially, in, there's an S2 inside S5. And this is what the what the solution does. Okay, and here are the fluctuations. So again, if I evaluate the classical action for that string, it gives me precisely the field theory answer. Um, so here's the here's the the answer for the fluctuation. So again, uh, there are three modes that describe the embedding inside this ADS5. So it's a it's a wall sheet inside ADS5 or that part. You can think of like that. Now, the, the modes that were massless, the five modes describing the bedding on the sphere, now will split according to the symmetries of the problem. So there's a charge scalar here. Um, okay, it's a complex uh, charge scalar. And then there are three scalars, and they have, they have this, this new bound. Good. So again, uh, now the supergroup on the which all these fluctuations have to, to get organized. It's SU2 slash 2. Uh, it's a less symmetric configuration. Um, and very nicely, you see that these chi 2, 3, and 4 are essentially, because of, of some properties of the metric in, in two dimensions, you can write, write them exactly as a, as a mass square equal to term in, uh, in, in ADS2. And this, these are three of the fluctuations that we had uh, in the half BPS. So these fluctuations essentially would play no substantial role. They are there. They are just. They will cancel uh, the similar fluctuations from the half BBS. This term they have this mass term, but the mass term of course vanishes when I take the limit, and in the limit of course we recover the previous supergroup. Okay. I uh, here the fermions. So I use a uh, green Schwartz uh, action. I am going to decompose the fermions uh, into eight two-dimensional Dirac uh, Dirac spinners. Here's the action. Again, they are charged. The, the, the charge is, um, is of course, uh, correlated with the charge of the scalar uh, in the previous fluctuations. Um, so I have my, fermi my bosonics and my fermionic uh, fluctuations. And what I can do to, to be at peace is to make sure that they organize nicely in a uh, super multiple of the of SU2 slash 2. So in this case, I'm following um, a notation by Beiser. In which essentially, so up here you have the bosonic uh, modes in the in the multiplet. These are the fermions. Um, so as you can see, this this 
two, this guy two, three, and, two, three, and four, they form a, a triplet on the one of the SU2. The bosonic subgroup is SU2 plus SU2. So on the one SU2, they form a triplet. In, in this notation, is you write two, two times one. Uh, they are a singlet with respect to the other SU2. There are these modes, seven, eight, and nine. They are the interesting modes. Uh, they form, again, a triplet uh, with respect to the second SU2. And uh, these modes are, are singlet, and these are different ends, spin one half. But again, you, don't, you write two times one half. Okay? But more interestingly, and this is to organize the computation, um, so I'm going to use a method, um, again, uh, that, re that, that helps me understand all these modes if I do some expansion, um, a Fourier expansion. And this is essentially the, the multiplet structure is, is written now in terms of the fields that I just obtained. So again, everything fits, all, all, the, uh, all the fields fall appropriately in the multiplet that, that are required. Now, I want to do my computation. Again, um, the, my loop, one loop effective action. So my one loop effective action will be given by, by this ratio of determinant. Minus here, so I'll bottom point to the bottom. But again, um, this is my computation. I, I'm going to to use this expansion in Fourier modes um, to rewrite my determinant. And um, the reason I'm doing this is because I want to use uh, this method, the uh, Galfandia globe method, which is particularly nice for ratio of determinant. So here, what I'm written is the ratio of so on, on, the, on, on the numerator, I have the determinant of the corresponding fluctuation for the quarter BPS. And in the denominator, I have it for the half BPS. OK, so these are my fluctuations. These are for the fermions. Uh, again, I want to, to emphasize that. Uh, so Martin used this, a similar method uh, to compute the, the half BPS uh, one loop effective function of the string. So, so we use that as, as, as a sanity check. Uh, but this is the this is the expression, and here's the answer. So so I know that this, this has been a little bit technical, all these determinants, etc. But this is the part that, that we should keep track because well we this is one of the parts that I think is, is the most uh, uh, most exciting. So again, two, three, and four we don't care because they were the same in the half BPS and the quarter BPS. So these are for seven, eight, nine modes. Uh, I'm going to regularize uh, using, using this prescription. And this sum essentially is going to give me uh, a part that, that will depend on the cutoff, and then a part that is independent of, of, of everything. And it, it comes uh, from the energy zero mode or the E equals zero modes of these of this fields. OK, this is my answer. Now, the, the interesting thing is that if I look at all the fluctuations, this is, these are the 5.6 modes and these are the, the fermions, I get exactly the same function. Okay? So when I put everything together for the answer uh, with the degeneracies, etc., so all these functions, so it is independent of the cutoff. And that's, that's nice, of course, not completely unexpected in, in such a highly supersymmetric uh, configuration, but it, I think it's, it's a very good uh, sort of consistency check. And more interestingly, uh, OK, so, so first of all, we find some discrepancy with the field theory. So the field theory answer uh, did not have this piece. Okay? So again, uh, we thought a lot about this and uh, went back and forth. There is a way in which you can, you can regularize uh, that, that will not contain the term, but I don't think uh, it's justified. So this is the answer. Again, it's almost the field theory answer, there's another piece. Now, the key thing and the, the optimistic message here is that this, this piece, we very clearly understood where it came from, right? So this three comes from, this, from these three modes. And, uh, and, the, and the contribution is only from, from the energy equals zero mode. So let, let me summarize that, because this is really, um, this is really the, the main conceptual thing that I, that I, that I want to, to propose that after you do this very complicated calculation with many, many modes and all that, and you step back, you see that almost all the modes cancel among themselves, the fermions and the bosons. And all the answer, at least the, the, the part that we know is the field theory answer, comes from E equals 0, 
the, this uh, uh, zero modes of this of this plot question. So this, of course, I mean, uh, of, of course, these modes were singled out by by some symmetry, but this is some sort of hint of localization. Again, I cannot talk about localization of uh, of a string because you know to do it properly, I need to have some of shell supercharged, etc. But but this, I would say, is like a Pulsman localization. So you do a computation that depends on many methods, and at the end, the answer came from three modes uh, of, of some fluctuations. So of course, it would be nice to try to understand this better, but I, at this point, what I can offer is that um, evidence that this, this sem similar mechanism is taking place in some other cases, like for example, for ABJM. And, uh, and again, it, we don't know how to formulate this uh, very rigorously, but I think that this is some evidence that what we're seeing is, is a version of bulk localization. Okay, so you start with, with your configuration, and uh, again, in, in the confines of what we can say, we, we, we can track the, the contribution, the most that contribute to the answer, and uh, it's a very specific set. So that's sort of, uh, in a sense, uh, a conclusion of this part. So I think that by doing this kind of computation, we are learning that there's also some interest in a structure in, 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 computa in when, when you go beyond the classical um, expectation volume holography. So, so what, what, what other precision tests can we, can we think of? And maybe uh, what we have done so far uh, can be improved. So there, for example, uh, the AB, in ABM theory, so there's also an exact, this is the area function, there's an exact answer for, for this with some loop in the fundamental representation. So I am uh, studying that with a, a new graduate student of mine and, and all collaborators. You can also go to different representations. So let me walk you very, very briefly through this because, uh, so there will be another conclusion that I think is, is worth uh, keeping in mind. So again, this is the answer, it, it, is, it is understood Again, using uh, matrix model uh, technology, albeit uh, a little bit more complicated. Uh, so this is the result. It, it's, well, we can discuss about the normalization of the result. This is not, not that important, but it is known. So on the, oops, on the holographic side, what I need to do is to, again, now I have ADS4, CP3, and I have to consider a classical solution. The, this classical solution in this, um, in this foliation, it corresponds to u equals zero, so it, it wraps ABS2. You evaluate uh, the classical action, and you, you see that it coincides with the classical expansion of the SAC uh, ABGM answer. Of course, you want to understand the fluctuations, so here are the fluctuations. Again, now we have six modes. Uh, yes, I mess up my signs, but you have six modes, so this is again a string uh, in type 2A, so two. Uh, oops, no. Sorry, <laughs> two modes uh, in, uh, that describe the embedding of ADS2 inside ADS4, and they are massive, and six massless modes uh, describing the a point embedding in, in, in CP3. So you can compute the, the one loop effective function with the same technology. So now the answer is zero, which would be, in, in a sense, is, is nicer than having a final answer, but that doesn't seem to match, um, that doesn't seem to match the, the field theory prediction at all. Of course, there are, there are still other questions as to what what precise holographic configuration you should consider because there's different patterns of breaking uh, the SU4 uh, arch symmetry in, uh, in CP3. But but again, you can with very easily available uh, technology you can compute the one loop correction. Um, but what what you can if you want to do a similar uh, Computation. I will not go into a lot of details, but I can. I already explained how you do this the quarter BPS in n equal four. So the simul there's a similar object in ABGM, and there again, remember there were six massless modes. So now they will be split into a two modes and, and four modes. These are the four modes that I can track. And again, if I want to reproduce the field theory answer, the e n equal zero modes and n equal zero modes of these fluctuations give me that answer. So there seems to be this universal uh, situation in which the field theory answer comes strictly from some 
some very specific modes from the holographic point of view. Even though, again, we are not we are not matching everything, and, and we have some there are some holes in this picture. But this fact, I think, is worth uh, highlighting. This exercise also clarifies something that, that for many many years I think people were very confused. And I I, I was saying that there were the, the log of lambda that, that appears in the in the answer was attributed to log A. C. If you do a string perturbation theory, there would be there would be some ghost zero modes, and uh, and that was. That was for a long time in the literature uh, the plausibility argument for, for this free half. But now in ABGM, there is there is no free half. In fact, uh, there are four modes. There are no three modes. So so this argument that, that the log of lambda was coming um, was coming from those zero modes seems to not be at least not universal in this context. So the degeneracy of the mode that we know contribute to the answer also tells me that there was really nothing special uh, about this in the n equal four case. So that I think for me is, is a is an important clarification because again we believe that in theory of course type two b and type two a would be different, but but more certainly we can we can point out uh, certain co uh, contributions. And now we see that in different configurations uh, we are having. Um, Different different coefficients here, so this cannot be related to something that is very general in the topological sector of the string theory. So I will uh, I will finish uh, with some observation. Again, this is pretty much a work in progress, but I think that we have uh, learned a few things. So more or less summarizing, there are some discrepancies, and of, yes, we believe that most of this is due to the fact that in gauge theory I can, in principle, compute in whichever order of limits I want. Uh, but string theory somehow seems to give me um, a particular expansion, and I, I need to understand because when you do saddle point or in, in the large matrix model uh, approximation, you always take n to infinity first, so that your eigenvalues become continuous, and then you have a, a distribution. So perhaps we need to, to go back to the matrix model and, and, and revisit that. But I think that, that having some, some input from gravity in this case is good. So this, there's this argument about the string theory zero modes and powers of lambda. We are seeing that this is not exactly, at least this is not as naive as, as we originally thought, because by looking at uh, n equal 4, ADS5 process 5, or ADS4 CP3, we see that the, the coefficients are different. So it cannot be uh, that it comes from some universal sector in the string theory. More, more generally, of course, it would be nice to take some of our uh, conclusions here about these corrections uh, that are appearing. Um, so once we settle the, the story in the, in the context of ABS5 process 5, we can take that lesson to, to confining field theory, for example. And, and, and maybe we can, string theory is telling us that there's some correction to the Wilson loop in confining theory that we, we, would, we, would, we were ignoring. Uh, but for me, and, and again, I, I think this is the message that I want to leave you with, the, the most interesting thing is that I'm, I'm seeing hints of localization. So there's a, a string quantum correction computation that seems to be very, very messy. But in fact, uh, the, the final answer turns out to come from a few more. So of course, uh, it would be nice to understand uh, this much better. So what, is, what, is, what are these modes, the, 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 the localization logos of, 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 of what? Right? So these are. There are many questions, but I think there's evidence that there's more structure than, than we thought. So I think with that, uh, I'd like to say thank you. Yes, so are there any questions? Yeah. Well, this is a simple question. I, when you went to the even dimensional binding D4, D2, and D6, what, yeah. why not D4? Is there something? Right, so. There's something special about D4. It is not. I mean, it's, it is not the dual of, of a computer. It, okay. We don't expect it, or we don't know if it is the dual of a, of, a, of one of these symmetric or anti-symmetric. Oh. Uh, that's what I is either the two or the six. But, uh, in fact, that that story is very complicated. I can I oh. can I can discuss uh, in more detail because okay. yeah, the supersymmetry counting in ABM is is, uh, is is more non-trivial than than any before because. So you start with uh, with 24, and then uh, 
So the operator that people write, and this, uh, since, since we have time, I guess I yeah. can go into some, some details. So, so, no so if you remember, the Wilson loop that I wrote to you was A mu, dx mu, plus some scalar. So this is the one that people wrote first yeah, for yeah, ABJM. If you want to write something, you have to prove that. Yes. So this is the one that people wrote first for ABJM. <laughs> something like this. And this is the guy that I have discussed, right? So then you have the scalar. So if you do that for ABGM, remember ABGM has two groups, right? Uh, so if you want plus UN and then K minus K, right? <coughs> this is the transcendent level. So, so basically what you're doing here will not preserve, let's say, half of the supersymmetry because this is the gauge feeling one of these. Uh, so you need to construct a completely different object, which you have, by the way, look at can canal did it, so you have to construct some super connection that contains fermions. Uh, it's a more complicated object. And because of that, it's never completely clear in, in holographically which is the object that corresponds dual to either half. Because this object, for example, is a 6 BPS. Okay. It's, it's, uh, so that, but, but I, will, I will tell you in more details all these deep, deep brains in, in, in this model. They, yeah, so you can, you can answer the question from holography. So if you give me a configuration like this, I, I construct my, my, I look at kappa symmetry of, of, the, of this string, and I can determine how, how many supersymmetries it preserves. But then, then the connection with the field theory is, is the one that is not very clear. Yeah, uh, I, I, don't, I think I missed what the bottom line was for the, the, the story with the quarter of Yes. So the strategy was to compare, to take essentially the ratio of the answers for right. quarter of EPS loops yes. and see, and you still did not find agreement, right? I still did not find agreement. And it was by a, a piece that was dependent on the, on that, Right. So in the in the in the field theory side, there's no this piece is not there. Okay. So we get we get this piece, and I again there's some okay. So we get this piece. Uh, so in, in, you can say okay, we, you fail again. There's no agreement. But 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 okay, I, I will I will grant you that. Uh, but I will say okay, the, the field theory piece, this piece, I I can track exactly where it came from. And it came from a very specific set of modes, this n equals zero modes of this. So for me, that, that's what I learned, that the field theory answer in this holographic content seems to come from a very specific locus of, of, of modes that I would not expect. I would expect, I would, originally I thought there would be many cancellations, but still it would be something more complicated. But, and this, this same argument I can run for, for ABGM, and I can see that there are four modes uh, that, that satisfies some, some symmetry relations, and they give me what, I'm, what I know to be the exact field theory answer. Unfortunately, there too I get some extra reminder pieces that I don't know. But, but at least one part of the computation, I, I, I learned where it came from, and I, I like that part. So uh, can you speculate as to why, what, why you're getting a mismatch now between the I don't know. Now I, 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 I really don't know. I mean, I, so just, okay, so, um, so there's, there's this, uh, let, let me, again, this is, this is the nice thing about uh, this kind of, uh, oops, going in the wrong direction, sorry. So, so here's the thing. Um, so I, I regularize my, ac my action this way. Um, now I was, I was very careful, and this is why, what I, I spent some time talking about group theory because I, I can organize the, mod, the, the super multiple structure using this energy. So I know that I'm doing uh, everything correctly. But if I were, and this, this is a mistake we made at the beginning, if I am not very careful with these limits, I can get rid of the, of the extra term. Okay? But I did not find that justified because I went to the group theory and the group theory tells me, so this, if this has energy E, then the other field have to E plus one, the other one E minus one. So, but there's, there seems to be, deep that part, that term can, can be, depends on exactly how you regularize. We think that this is the, re the correct regularization because it preserves supersymmetry at every, at every le level. But, uh, but, I have, I, but I, you can observe that if you 
do your regularization slightly differently. Again, this expression is always there. This this cancellation is there. But then the term, uh, but then the term in this by six, which are the you see the I also know where the, the the disagreement is coming from. This piece. So this piece I can I can get rid of if I change. Uh, so here I already did. Uh, I did not explain the regularization, but if I change this limit, then this piece will not be here, and I would get exactly the field theory answer. But I was, I don't feel comfortable uh, changing that, given that I understood the supermultiple stuff. The, the regularization here is again by just cutting it off. Yes. E yeah. from plus lambda to minus lambda. Right. right. Yeah. I, I mean, this, this, this is related and maybe naive. Back in the day when they used to do instant time calculation and super symmetric theories, okay. uh, the, and the, the computer determinants, the, the idea was that all non zero modes cancel and only zero modes remain. Right. And that, for instance, would give you exact beta function and whatnot. But that is also a scheme dependent, such a scheme dependent statement. In other words, for this, the beta function is a scheme dependent quantity. So for this to happen, the beta function that you get from this mm -hmm. is a very specific beta function and a very specific regularization scheme or subtraction scheme, if you will. Uh, looks like you just say that this term must vanish by regularization definition and feel good about it. Yeah, but uh, okay, but. The problem with regularization is that you need to choose. Okay, so here I'm, I'm my, my claim is that I'm, I'm looking at a regularization that preserves supersymmetry. So I, I, I look at my multiplets and I'm going to cut off my energy levels in a way that preserve that structure. So I feel that this is, I mean, I could do something else, but I think this is the one? most natural one for me. And this unfortunately doesn't give which you the right answer. Which super symmetry in an obvious way. Maybe there yes. is another one which doesn't match it uh, level by level, but preserves super symmetry in a kind of uh -huh. more convoluted way. Because that was essentially the statement uh, of the of the instant on calculus back in the day. That those beta functions are beta functions in a specific regularization prescription. When people did. I don't know, modified MS subtraction, we can get those. Can I ask about this zero mode that you are talking yeah. about? So you have zero energy mode, so if you uh, say uh, give expectation value, how does the shape of the work is changing? What, what are the zero modes along which direction? Good. So, okay, so I, I mean, I, I don't know if it's, So that's what coordinates are these 789. Uh, so these are coordinates on the sphere. They, these are, so the, in the sphere I have five. They already in the half BPS they were massless. Now I have the, the five, these five modes split into two that preserve symmetry around, around the top and the other three. These are these other three. On the S5. Yes. And so if you give a prediction value, it deforms along the S5. Right. Yes, yeah, so any more questions? Okay, let's thank you again and uh,